used up a whole slide on the introduction. Uh, what I want to do tonight is just give you a very quick little intro to what's in your genes and what's not. Uh, a lot of people, many people are interested in their genes. How many of you had your genes done? Okay, not too many. Uh, some people think it's too expensive. A lot of them think, do I really want to know whether I'm going to die? Well, I don't need to look at your genes to know you're going to die. Uh, this chart, you know, I left, a little bit, I left a little bit just in case, but chances are you're going to die. We even know the chances of when you're going to die, but we don't know them very personally. And so what I'm going to talk to you about tonight, to some extent, is my own data, because that's the one I'm allowed to use. I don't want to invade anybody else's privacy. Now, this chart actually shows that, yeah, there's genetics and then there's behavior. I actually have a quite high chance of dying of an accident in space. Uh, but here are my genetic risks according to 23andMe. I, I want to call out two things here. One, just so you understand this, it shows that my risk of colon cancer is about 4%. Uh, I happen to know it's probably 60 or 80 percent, not of dying of it, but of getting it, because I've already had a polyp removed. So I'm either one out of 20, or you never know, maybe they had the wrong data. Also here you see my risks of type 1 and of type 2 diabetes. These are interesting in general, because type 1 diabetes, my risk is almost 70 percent higher than average, but it's still very low. It's, it's 1.7 percent, not a lot. And type 1 diabetes, is 70, 80% heritable. Whereas type 2 diabetes, the one that's much more familiar, most people the risk is something like 20%, but you can dramatically lower that through your behavior, or you can raise it through the opposite of that kind of behavior. And here is a chart from Fitbit showing how I am changing my odds of getting diabetes by doing all that walking, and I swim every day, and so forth. The Fitbit data changes, the genetic data doesn't, but combined, you can change your risks. Another way to change your risks is to find a lump in your breast and think you're going to get breast cancer, which dramatic, by the way, this was wrong, it was benign, uh, but that will change everything and it will lessen your chance of dying of other things and it will also lessen the cost of dying of an accident in space. So, you get treated as good ones. Um, anyway, we know very little. And so the early users of 23andMe, which is direct-to-consumer genetics, are actually benefactors. They contribute more data, actually, than they get. Because right now, your genome, it's basically like a very long Russian novel. 30 million SNPs. And all we have to understand it is something like a hundred word glossary, which explains a few of these words. Uh, you'll see an explication of this Russian novel in the next slide. What 23andMe does is, it doesn't actually do your whole genome, it does a small selection of it, call it an essay in Russian, but it's annotated so that you can actually find the interesting words, those interesting snips that indicate something. But exactly what they indicate and exactly how they work, we don't know yet. And that's why we need to collect more data. Here, for example, is the different SNPs that indicate my risk for cancer. Some of them are positive, some of them are negative. Altogether, they combine to generate that 22%. But we don't really understand how they interact yet. On the other hand, there is some information that's already useful, mostly having to do with how you react to different drugs, including Coumadin, which is a blood thinner. Uh, turns out I have increased reaction to it, so I need a lower dose. You can also do useless but exciting things, like comparing yourselves to your relatives. This is my brother George. I'm sure that's why Tikva thought the speaker was George. On the other side, it's a very distant relative I discovered through 23andMe using technology similar to the detection of plagiarism, these little bits that are the same. Uh, yes, some people may think it's narcissistic, but it's more educational than solitaire. In the end, I think you shouldn't be afraid of your genome. It's like a mirror, you should understand it, and 
if you want to sign up for 23andMe and share your data with me, I'm ready. Thank you very much.